Now, here's another problem that involves calculating the empirical formula as well as calculating now the molecular formula. We can easily do that. So let's actually begin. So we're going to repeat what we did with the empirical formula in the in this question as we did in the last question. And then of course, talk about how to calculate the molar, the molecular formula if we're given the molar mass as it is in this problem right here. Now, we start again with our numbers. We have 40.92. We're going to just right away say that's for so 100, so that's grams of carbon. 4.58 grams of hydrogen. And of course, 54.50 grams of oxygen. Let me just give more a little bit more space here. Very well. So remember, our next step is we need to convert to moles. Anytime you see grams in stoichiometry, you will have to convert to moles. So Periodic table, you should consult it right now and find that the number would be 12.01. That's the molar mass and the moles, that's equal to one mole. For hydrogen, that would be 1.01 .01 and one mole of hydrogen. And for oxygen, it is 16. So we go ahead and calculate each. So 40.92 divided by 12.01, which would give us 3.407 moles of carbon. For hydrogen, it would give us 4.407. 5, 4, or 5, 3 moles of hydrogen. And for oxygen, it would give us 3.406 moles of oxygen. Very well. Now our next step is to identify the smallest. So obviously this is going to be our smallest number, but it's equal to that one really. That is a very, very tiny difference. Nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and divide by that. I'm going to just simply divide here on the side because we can use the rest of the space and it's probably an easy way to remember that. So we're just going to divide by the smallest, which is 3.406 moles. And that would give us one, because again, we're trying to get to the number of atoms of each. 3.406. This would give us about 1.33. And then, of course, this one would give us one because we're dividing by itself. So this is our smallest. Now, we're running into an issue here because you might think that we can say, or here we go, the C to H to O that ratio is one to 1.33 to one. But 
the problem is that to a reader and you can find any chemistry book, there's no such thing as one and one third of a hydrogen atom. We would like to deal with atoms as just solid entities, whole entities. So, and then you know, say, okay, well, let's round down. Well, you cannot. This is simply a significant portion, right, of the amount. So you can just round down to one. It would actually simply erase too much data. So we could have just said one to one to one from the beginning. But you know there, this data must be giving us more. So anytime you have a decimal, you have to find the multiple to make it a whole number. So if we have 1.33, this translates into one and one third, which is four over three. This is a mixed fraction, this is an improper fraction. Three times the one plus the one, that's four. So how do we get rid of the three is we multiply by three. So that means we have to multiply the entire thing by three, and that would give us three to four to three, which means we have C3, H4, O3. And that is our empirical formula. Now, I know you're thinking, how do I know this? And what do I look for? So I'll give you some quick information before we move on to the molecular formula. So if you let me write them down here. If you ever have a number with this kind of decimal, you have 0.2, something with a 0.2, you need to make this a whole number. So you would multiply by five, correct? So for example, if I have 1.2, well, I need to multiply this by five and that would give me a six. If you have 0.25, you have to multiply by a four and that would give you a one. 0.33, we just did this one, multiply by three and that would give you a one and 0.5 would multiply by two and that would give you a one half and so on. But these are the common ones. So very well, how do we now determine the molecular formula? It says part B, if the molar mass of ascorbic acid was found to be 176 grams per mole, what is its molecular formula? Now a word here that I wanna show you in the homework or sometimes in the lecture, we may actually use AMU. So let's bring this number down, bring some more information. So the molar mass of the molecular compound was found to be 176 grams per mole. Once again, I'm going to add here that this can be written in AMU. That would be the atomic mass. So either one is fine. So the molar mass of the compound, they found out that it was 176. How then can we get more information on the molecular formula? Well, you'd have to actually use the empirical formula this way. So what you need to do next is you need to find the molar mass of the molecular formula, the, the empirical formula. So the molar mass of the empirical formula, which is C3H4O3, you know, you would calculate this just the same way we did, three carbons, four hydrogens, and three oxygens. Would come out to be 87 point Oh, six.
So we have two pieces of information here. How do we determine the molecular formula of the compound? Well, you compare these two numbers. So in order for you to determine what's the molecular formula, you need to determine the multiple of the molecular formula. So that would be N. So you would take simply the molar mass of the molecular formula that was given to you. And this number is given. You cannot just come up with it. Divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula. And that would be calculated. So then that would be one seventy six grams per mole divided by eighty seven point oh six grams per mole. And since we need a multiple, that's an integer here, that would give us a two. So that would give us a two. So this two should all should right away tell you that you have twice as many atoms in the molecular formula as the empirical formula, as in the empirical formula. So what you do then is double. So this is my molecular empirical formula. My molecular formula would be two times, of course, each one of these, and that would be C6H8O6. So that's the molecular formula of ascorbic acid. You have this problem here, please work on it. And we can do that in class.